are starting off with the new Wonder Girl. I am obsessed with Yara Floor. I think she is so cool. She is listed as an Amazon of the Amazon. I want to be her. There have, of course, been other Wonder Girls, but Yara debuted in 2021. Her mother was an Amazon who ended up in Brazil, and while in Brazil, she fell in love with a local deity, and then we got Wonder Girl. Yara was born in Brazil, but unfortunately did not get to grow up there as her mother was taken out, so she was taken to safety to be raised in Boise, Idaho. At 21, she traveled back to Brazil and quickly starts to be a hero, saving people from burning cars and and meeting mermaids truly was not the vacation she thought she would be getting. She ends up on Mount Olympus at one point and literally trains with the gods and got a pegasus named Jerry. The fact that this isn't my life is actually heartbreaking. Yara's powers include generally being a superhuman, but also she is capable of currently limited hydrokinesis. Part of her various training led her to be a master in archery, war, horseback riding, combat of all forms, and swordsmanship. Yara goes through a few more character building battles before it's time for her to join a JLA team. When Dark Crisis rolls around, she is offered a spot on John Kent's new team, we'll yap about that next. She actually rejects him at first, but then Titan Tower is attacked and she reconsiders John's offer, ends up helping the team out. She is my hero and I hope she stays here forever. Like father, like son though, John Kent is following in his dad's footsteps and taking charge creating the newest iteration of the Justice League. This new league is made up of Supergirl, Dr. Light, Booster Gold, Jamie's Blue Beetle, Ted's Blue Beetle, Damien's Robin, Jackson's Aqualad, Frost, Harley Quinn, and Frankenstein. That is quite the lineup of 10 young heroes. This team was formed in 2022's Dark Crisis 1 because the older Justice League members all perished and the world are pretty messed up and need heroes to keep their villains at bay. There were some more experienced heroes around, but they didn't believe the Justice League was actually dead, so they were busy out looking for them. The new Justice League was a band of misfits, but they had heart and determination and they were doing their best. Though the team didn't end up working out, it was interesting and it gave Harley Quinn the chance to show off her heroic side. Up next is the Ray. I know the character isn't like new new, he existed before the last reset, but he is back on a Justice League team. Ray made his debut back into the main story now in JLA, the Ray Rebirth, in early 2017, joining Batman's new JLA that same year. I personally think Ray's story and powers are super interesting. He absorbs light and then can take it and direct the energy from it in light beams, rearrange molecules, create things out of light, and because the way we see is through light hitting our eyes, he can manipulate light, causing illusions. He is also able to make himself invisible by bending light. Ray claims that if he were to absorb a enough light, he would never need to nourish himself again, so photosynthesis, but that's the only plant thing about him, I assure you. For most of his life, Ray was kept in the dark about his powers by being literally in the dark. His mom told him he was allergic to any light, fatally allergic, and that was enough for him. He never saw the light of day. They went to extreme measures for this. Ray got no birthday candles, he could only watch TV with the screen on low light and only for an hour at a time. Eventually, Ray got tired of this when he grew up and can't imagine why. He eventually snuck out and within hours was literally glowing and then turned invisible. He was invisible for four years until he helped save someone and made himself just like a beacon of light of a person and then he was a superhero. Another relatively new Justice League team is Justice League Queer. It's an informal team technically, but I think they're cool so I had to include them. The team is led by Sorcerer Extrano. He formed the hero team because he wanted wanted to make sure other heroes who identified in the LGBTQ plus community knew they weren't alone. Extrano was the first DC hero to come out if we are looking at it using like our time. There are about 15 heroes on this team. Some highlights include Rey, who we talked about, Aqualad, Crush, and Batwoman. The team was first brought together during a pride parade. A villain showed up and literally made it rain on their parade. The rain was enchanted, so it was causing problems and not just like rain because I can assure you, regular rain would have meant nothing to an LGBTQ community parade. All it would have caused is for someone to start playing Rain On Me by Lady Gaga in a party. The comic itself, it's funny, plain and simple, I laughed. Extrano refers to the team as his JLQ kick line at one point. No notes, loved it, happy belated Pride Month team. Naomi McDuffie has crash landed into the DC universe. Literally, she is a teenage superhero disaster in a good way. Naomi is not from 
Earth. She is from some other undetermined alternate Earth. She ends up on the main Earth though. Naomi's Earth was subject to too much pollution and the ozone layer collapsed. When that happened, radiation started appearing. It was harmless to almost everyone except 29 specific people. They all got superpowers. Some of the 29 were bad people, some were good. They end up fighting each other. Naomi was not one of these heroes, but her mom was. When Naomi was born, the evilest of the 29 wanted her out of the picture, so to save her, she was sent to Earth and adopted by the McDuffies. Growing up, she thought she was normal, well, as normal as a teen with transformation energy powers can be. In addition to energy manipulation, she can also fly, create portals, is physically enhanced, and heals very quickly. She needs to be able to heal quickly, considering she fights barefoot, which is such a choice, but go off. After fighting with the villain of her world and losing, she goes to look for help. Crashing into a hot dog stand outside the Daily Planet, Superman is more than willing to assist. He calls in Batman because Batman has experience with troubled teens. Eventually, Naomi finds her place on Earth, taking the name Powerhouse and becoming affiliated with the Justice League and Young Justice. Every day I miss Justicia, the Justice League of Mexico. Justicia is Spanish for justice, so it's pretty on the nose with that one. The team first appeared in Suicide Squad, Most Wanted, El Diablo, and Amanda Waller 5 and 6. A few team members were in some Superman comics, and that's literally it. The team leader is El Dorado. He's Mexican Superman. He can fly. He's strong. He also teleports and does minor telepathy. There are three other members on the team. Akrata, a skilled martial artist, an acrobat capable of teleportation due to to the Mayan artifact she wears. Then we have El Muerto, he's undead, which makes him hard to kill. And finally, we have Iman, he wears a suit of armor that gives him superior strength. Other than the name, there are direct connections between Hestitia and the Justice League. El Muerto idolizes Superman, and Iman received a scholarship from Wayne Enterprises. Each individual hero has had a handful of appearances, but the whole team has two. I think they are neat and should get more chances to show off together. Up next is Master Cola, better known as Insight, and that name is very fitting, of course, and I will tell you why. Insight's original occupation was information thief, but then Supergirl caught him and helped him get it together. After a brief stint in jail, he decided to use his thievery skills for good. He was going to steal the data from the Department of Extra Normal Operations that exposed their shady behavior because he believed the public deserved to know. It's a tall order to fulfill, but he managed to get it done. He built himself some hero armor and infused his blood with nanotech. The nanotech would interface with his skeleton, which he cybernetically enhanced, as well as any wireless signal it would interface with too. He let himself be arrested by the DEO so that once inside the base, the nanotech in him would activate. This would lead to the systems being hacked and the info being gathered. Upon escape, Insight was able to take this information and load it into a database to be shared, exposing all that corruption. Insight becomes affiliated with the Justice League through the Justice Foundation, and that is a superhero think tank founded to improve humankind through the creation and application of innovative technologies and advancements in medicine. He got his dream job. Another DC character that I recently became obsessed with and want to steal their life is Eternal Knight. She was once one of King Arthur's Knights of the Round Table, and now, in the present day, was part of Justice League Dark. So she's immortal, and she is really good at sword fighting. She was the 13th knight, but instead of being allowed in battle, she was assigned to watch Excalibur in the water the Lady of the Lake probably existed in. She wanted to go to battle, but she had babysitting duty. She is released from babysitting by Merlin's betrayal, so she sets out to stop him. Along the way, she meets Batman and the two work together briefly. Eternal Knight has a really cool suit of armor made of ninth metal. She joins the Justice League Dark in 2021, helping them in their battle against Merlin. Up next is Justice League Odyssey. They sound cool because they are. JLO was created for the Ghost Sector to clean it up and maintain order there. After Dark Knight's Metal and Justice League No Justice were over, the Ghost Sector showed up and no one really knew what it was. And you know what that means. Time to assemble a team to check it out. Justice League Odyssey. The team is made up of Azariel, Starfire, Cyborg, and Jessica Cruz's Green Lantern. Many fans of this series praise Cruz as a high point of the series, finding her story very compelling. Jessica doesn't actually start out with the team. She was already in the ghost sector, assigned there by the Green Lanterns to patrol the area. It's during one of her patrols that she finds the team. The story follows the JLO as they aim to help the planets that exist in the ghost sector. The planets are being held captive, and to add on to that, Darkseed is gunning to take over the multiverse, so there is a lot 
happening, but it's a fun read. And finally, Alan Scott, the Earth's first Green Lantern has gotten a pretty stellar revamp. Alan Scott has been around since the 40s, but disappeared after the big thing, the big reset, but made his triumphant return in 2018. Scott's life took place in the 19s years. He joined the army in 1936. Scott was gay, and while in the army, he fell in love with a fellow engineer, Johnny Ladd. It was going really well until Johnny was seemingly eliminated by a burst of crimson energy from the ocean. He wasn't. It turns out Johnny was actually a Soviet agent whose mission was to get the crimson flame for Russia. I mean, he did get it and became the Red Lantern. Imagine having to fight your evil ex-boyfriend like this. Anyway, after Johnny died, Alan was discharged from the military because they didn't approve of the relationship. Alan wasn't doing well and checked himself into Arkham Asylum to be cured, which is very sad, but he met a woman there named Billy who carved him a lantern as a present. When Alan escaped, he took this lantern and jumped onto a train. On that train was his next boyfriend, train conductor Jimmy. They would hang out on the train together during Jimmy's shifts, but then one night, the train went over a bridge that blew up. So the train blew up and everybody died. But Alan, because what is a superhero without an immeasurable amount of trauma, the reason Alan survived was the lantern from Billy. It started emitting a green light, healed Alan's wounds, and boom, now the Earth has Green Lantern. Alan joined the Justice Society of America. Then there was a moment where he was written out of history and then written back in, then had to deal with time travelers. Alan's been through a lot. Let's give him a break. But thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make your mark on the comment section down below. This is Juliana signing off. Bye!